Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So I actually made a very shortened version of this video on TikTok recently and I realized this would be a great YouTube video because there really is a lot to unpack here. But I also wanna state two things right off the bat. Number one, if you enjoy doing something, it keeps you consistent and it gets you closer to your goals, that's what you should be doing. And number two, I truly do love that I'm seeing so many more women picking up a barbell and lifting heavy. But with all of that being said, I still think that the barbell is a very overrated tool. I actually prefer utilizing free weights like kettlebells and dumbbells, not only for myself, but also with all of my training clients. But also keep in mind, me and my clients, we're not competing in CrossFit. We are not working on Olympic skills. We're just trying to look and feel a little better. So in this video, I'm gonna give you three reasons why I do not prioritize the barbell, some exercises I do actually prefer the barbell for, and then I'll show you some alternatives for the most common barbell exercises. So let's dive on in. I have my laptop on the radiator and it's very hot. I know. Okay, reason number one, the barbell is in a fixed position. So this means that when you're doing a specific exercise, that fixed position might not be the right place for you to hit your proper form. Remember that we are all anatomically built differently. So by forcing us to all do an exercise the same way because this bar is in one fixed position, is silly. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're doing an overhead press. If your shoulder mobility or even just your anatomy does not allow for this to be the ideal position on the barbell, you're not doing yourself any favors. The setup actually might be more comfortable and more suited to you if you were using something like kettlebells or dumbbells. Reason number two, barbells do not allow for unilateral upper body work. I've talked about unilateral training a lot before, but that basically means training one side of your body and then the other. This is super important because it's gonna help you identify any strength or muscle imbalances side to side. So if you're using a barbell for things like an overhead press or a chest press or a bent over row, A, your stronger side might be taking over most of the work and B, you're never gonna be able to even out those imbalances side to side. So that's why, again, I not only prefer free weights for these exercises, but I actually prefer to do them isolated single side. Does that make sense? And reason number three, I don't like spinal loading. Okay, so spinal loading, when I say that, that means putting weight directly onto your spine. An example of this is like a barbell back squat. Personally, with research that I've done, with people that I have spoken to who are very highly educated in the world of fitness, I do not think that the risk is worth the reward because here's the thing, you can work on your squats without putting weight on your back. You can rack the weight on the shoulders, you can front rack it, you can overhead squat it, you can offset it. I mean, there are so many other ways that you can work on your squat. And keep in mind, this is just my opinion. You know, there is science and experience on both sides that say this is great and, and also this is not the best option. So one more time, it's my opinion. And also remember that my opinion is backed up from a place of one of my primary goals as a trainer is to make sure that you do not get injured in my session or out of it. So not only am I training you to prevent injury in daily life, I do not want you to get hurt while we are training together either. And I simply do not think that the barbell for many exercises, if it's spinal loading, is the best option. Let's talk about some exercises that I do prefer the barbell for. Hip thrust. Without a doubt, a barbell is the best tool for this exercise. You're gonna be able to load it way heavier than you could with a giant dumbbell or two on your hips, and it's gonna be a lot sturdier. Most people doing a hip thrust are working to really build the strength in their glutes, so you'll want a lot of stability. Next exercise is a deadlift. I actually prefer a hex bar or trap bar or whatever you wanna call it, but I will take a traditional bar too. And the reason why I prefer the hex bar is because it's just a more natural path for the weight to come to the sides rather than to the front. This is why people also say that's more of a beginner lift using that hex bar, but honestly, it's effective, so I really don't care. And lastly, I'm gonna go with a front squat. Now, while I don't have any issue with a front squat using a barbell, I still think it's a really hard exercise for most people because most people have a pretty weak core and then pretty shitty wrist mobility. But I do think it's an excellent exercise and a totally valid way to use the barbell. Personally, I'm gonna prioritize like a goblet squat or just a front rack squat with dumbbells with my clients. But again, barbell with front squats, totally, totally valid exercise choice. Hello. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some alternatives to barbell specific exercises. This isn't really gonna be like reinventing the wheel. It's nothing you haven't seen before. But the point of this is to show you that we can still work on very basic 
basic movement patterns by using free weights. So I have a lot of crap in the room. <laughs> Let's start at the top. Mm, 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 mm. I'm so hungry. We're gonna start with a dumbbell chest press. I feel like this is the most common barbell exercise you see. Ideally, we would be doing this on a bench, which I do have in the other room. She's a little too lazy to bring it into this room, so I'm gonna show you from the floor. But I feel like that's good because most people don't have access to a bench at home anyway. So this is a great example of if you're using a barbell, that might not fit perfectly to the frame of your body or to your shoulder anatomy. So by using free weights, we're gonna be able to make it more specific to you. So pressing the weights up, notice that I have a little bit of an angle. So I'm not coming out like full field goal and I'm not keeping it completely neutral. So we're gonna inhale as the weights come down, exhale to press up. Now if I were doing this on a um, bench, I could get a little more range of motion. We're not super concerned about it today though. And notice that each arm's moving separately, obviously. So I'm gonna see very quickly which arm is stronger than the other. The answer is the left arm is a weak little bitch. So that's gonna give me an opportunity to really start to work out those muscle imbalances side to side. I would actually, if I noticed a crazy difference, I would do this single side and always start with the left side and then meet it with the right. As always with all of these exercises, you will not be lifting for like max strength. If that is your goal, you're probably gonna wanna use a barbell. But the average person is not really lifting for max strength. Anyway, keep, let's keep going. Another big one you see is the deadlift. And like I said, I do actually really like a barbell for this, but you don't always have access to one. So I'm gonna show you one of my other favorite ways to do a deadlift, which is just with one heavy kettlebell. So we're gonna take the kettlebell right in between the feet. So we're straddling it, slight turnout in the toes and feet are underneath the shoulders. From here, we're gonna break at the hips, send the booty back, reach down for that bell. And then I want you to pull like you're trying to break the bar in half. This is gonna get your lats engaged. Big inhale, exhale, drive the floor away. Stand it up, arms are nice and tight. Inhale over, exhale, press it up. As always, there are tons of variations on deadlifts. So when you're picking one, you just wanna think about what your specific goal is. The big one, the back squat. Yeah, I just, I don't like it. I don't think it's worth it. And I think that we can get a lot out of just like freaking heavy dumbbells on the shoulders. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is just a dumbbell rack squat. You can do it with kettlebells. I don't know, sandbags, I don't know. Just put weight on your shoulders. These are really hefty, so I'm actually gonna connect them in the center just for a little more support. And you're literally doing this just like your normal squat. I like to keep it a little bit more upright than if we had something on our back because you just don't need to hinge forward that far. So big inhale, exhale, drive it back up. Now, obviously, if you were getting more, take these weights off the front. If the weight was on your back, you would be getting more of a forward bend. So you are gonna get more hip extension, which means you're gonna get a little more stretch on the glutes. Personally, I think there are other ways to get that big stretch on the glutes using things that are more of a hip dominant motion. Also one other thing, like if we're thinking about squats functionally, it's sitting and standing, right? Let me, who sits like this? Who sits like that? No, you're upright when you sit. You sit and then you stand. You know who sits up like this? Old people. Don't train like you're an old person. Got heated. Overhead press. This is another one just like the chest press. If you're not isolating side to side, you're just not gonna be able to really isolate those muscle imbalances side to side. Also, I actually, oh, ah, my hair's in my armpit. I always prefer doing single side for our overhead presses. If we are using both arms at the same time, you are just at a higher risk of going into spinal extension because it's just a lot of weight above your head. So I find that you have an easier time controlling that if you're single siding it. So starting in that neutral grip, Flip the palm at the top, bring it back down, nice and slow and controlled. This is also gonna give you a little more rotation in that shoulder socket than if you were just holding the bar like this the entire time. Last thing is lunges. Again, I just don't like it with a barbell because I'm not super keen on loading it on your back. But I think that something that we don't think about a lot is single side loading or offset loading. So one of my favorite things to do with like a good old fashioned reverse lunge, load it on one side, so that we're working against this urge to flex side to side. So you're getting some sneaky core work in there. And then you take that same leg back, tap it forward, back, tap it forward. That is going to be one of the best core exercises you can do. You can load it pretty heavy and you're gonna burn the crap out of that glute hamstring and quad. I can't remember if I did an outro to this. This is obviously a different day than the first half of the video. So we're gonna film one right now too. So I'm gonna say this, 
in every single video from now on. If you enjoy moving in a certain way, if it gets you closer to your goals and it keeps you consistent, do that. So if that is using a barbell, I think that's fantastic. But I also think that we all should understand why we're doing something, if it's actually the best thing to get us to our goals, and what the risk reward factor is. Any questions, leave them in that comment box below. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any videos, and I will see you in the next one. A sofa, a cup of coffee, we've got the older man getting into something on his balcony.